um, we will be um, publishing those recordings onto our website um, uh, early next year. I'll, I'll um, let everyone know when, when they're available if you do need to to go back as, and use it as a re, bit of a revision tool. I, I, I know I've used that as a, as a learning tool on, on many different um, software packages that I've learned. I find it very powerful. All right, so today it's, it's really an admin process that we're going to go through with documents. Um, so you really need admin rights and you should be able to see this admin button on the process menu. Uh, if, you, if you're not able to see the, the, uh, the admin button, it means you don't have administration rights. Uh, so this, this whole training session won't make a real lot of sense to you. So it's really just for the administrators and how to, how to really um, affect what's happening with the document after it's been created and, and moving them around. And, and also we'll look at a little bit of, of the diary and, and the calendar and how all that, the emails work in the background as well. Depends on how the time goes with that one. All right, so we're going to be looking at the admin functions. Pretty straightforward, we start with clicking on the admin. And this then brings up the process menu. Now what I, th this process menu I call the, the doing or the action uh, menu, as opposed to if we were looking at the, the lower process menu, that's more for the, I suppose, the viewing of what's been happening with the documents and that's the, this one below and we will look in, at that a little bit later on but to start with we're going to be looking at this process menu and I clicked on ad, the, the admin button and the process menu is, is like layers, it's, it's one layer upon another and it just brings up another aspect of the process menu. I can click on the back button and it goes back to the, what we originally saw of the process menu. Last week we clicked on review and that open up all these other choices that we intuitively follow through. Um, I also pointed out, just as a reminder as well, by turning on the, the workflow, and that was just right-clicking on any record, clicking on the workflow, and then clicking on the, the record button, that highlights the workflow down the left-hand side. And you can see on any particular document where that particular document is on the actual workflow at any one time. So I find that quite handy as well. And just to um, to get rid of that screen to go back to the library, I usually just click on the function menu, and that refreshes the screen and brings back up, back up the libraries that we're looking at. Now, um, always remembering, okay, what module am I in? The knowledge module. Number two is the document function menu, and we're going to be looking at the corporate documents today, and then on to policies and then on to the, the admin function. So the first one we're going to look at, the master, you probably saw me click on that before, that's exactly the same as the doc info on another part of the process menu. So it just basically saves you from having to go backwards and forwards by clicking on the master. Um, the next one is we're going to be looking at is renaming. Now this renames the record reference not the actual name of the document. If you wanted to change the name of, or sorry I should say, the name of the record, we can go into the master or doc info as, as I highlighted and click on this document title and change the name there. That's not what we're looking at today. We're actually looking at this document ref reference or it's also called a record reference and that's this greyed out field up here that we're going to be able to change. All right. So we want to click on that record button beside the name of the um, of the record, and then click on rename. So at the moment, it brings up what what number it is here. It's zero zero zero. Something to keep in mind. I'll just go back to um, the list of, of records again. Something to keep them on in mind is when you're going to be renaming. It, it's worthwhile having a look down and just seeing what numbers are taken and what what aren't. You can you can go potluck and just put the name in if you like and, and see if it's uh, see if it's available. But down here up to 904, and we've got two pages here. 906, 907, 909. So I might go for 910 just to make sure that uh, that's available for me. All right, and I'm going to change this introduction um, document or this introduction record. Clicking on admin. Once again, I'm in knowledge. I'm in documents. 
admin and policies and we've found the record that we want to change I click on the admin and I click on rename and we type in the similar um, the prefix of the library which is pol pol dash and 910 is what we decided to uh, to call it and then we click on OK Oh, it seems to be taking a little bit longer than normal. Okay, and then we click on done. Okay, and here we go. We're already on page two of two, and there's POL 910. If for whatever reason, oh, I made a mistake, I didn't want to call it that. It's quite simple, and you just reverse the whole process and going back in and typing it back in. If I remember what it was, it was 000. zero, zero we can go back to what we just called it and go through the same process again. This gets quite handy if you're just moving documents around and, and some documents have a bit more of a higher priority maybe and you want to put them at, at a different level then it's what you know you can move those um, those numbers around and there it is POL000. Now the next one we're going to be looking at is moving a record and a document from one library to another. So which one will we move them to? We'll move them to say the standing orders library. We we'll click on the standing orders library and just see okay we don't have anything in that. We just check if there's anything in there and what number might you want to be up to. So back to the policy and we'll move that same um, that same document there. So we click on move we look for the library that we want to go to and that's the standing orders library here it is down here and we click on that and if you're unsure of what the prefix is what you want to name it that's what's in brackets there so it's STO and we know there wasn't one in there so we can go 001 what that's doing is moving it from this policy library and, and 000 to a renaming it and moving it at the same time to this. Now you don't have to change a prefix if you don't want to. You can call it POL, whatever. You can call it anything you like, but it just keeps that naming convention um, the same as most of the other, or really all the other documents in that library. And we click on OK. Excuse me, Peter Lorraine here. What version of Fast Tracker are we looking at here? Uh, what version is it? That's a good question. I'll just check that after we've finished that processing. We click on the, the Help button here. And that brings up this window. And the build number is 2.3.01. So you should be able to find that on yours by just clicking on that Help button. Or that question right, mark thanks. button, I should say. Yep. It's a little bit different tonight. Okay. All right. Just talked to the technical guys. I'm not too sure um, where they're at with that rollout. Um, we started, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, on rolling that new update. So um, just send an email in and, and, and see where you're at with that. I'm not too sure what, what's happening with your uh, your instance. Okay. Um, okay. So we've moved this particular record and document from the policies library into the standings orders library and renamed it at the same time. That's where it sits. Just to check, back in the policies library, there it's moved from there. It's page one of two. All right. The content we don't use a real lot, it's, it has a, um, once again, it's layer upon layers in this process menu. And um, this is more for a lot more technical um, processing. Um, it's really if, for example, if you um, uh, if you change the brand or your logo in all your documents, you can do a, a search under all the documents and change a logo in every document you've got. Uh, you can change the terms 
in all the documents if you like. So if you have a new CEO or there's a new term that you use and you want to change that on all the existing documents, you can do that as well. We find a lot of people just change their templates and then go from this moment onwards with the change and that's where you click on the actual template and open up the particular template that you want to use. Now these are all the templates that, that are used in Fast Track. The most popular ones you'll use are the, the documents template and you can just click on this and this checks this particular template out. You can change the template and that's the one that's used every time you create a new document, uh, a new Word document I should say in, uh, in Fast Track. Clicking on documents again, back to admin. We will use um, disposal or, or you, you, the admin people certainly use disposals a lot more than, um, than a lot of the other functions on, on this particular process menu. And the first one that, that I find is used quite a lot is the obsolete. This can also be called closed in, in different, um, different other modules, it's also called closed, but in documents it's called obsolete. And basically it's, it's documents that, that aren't being used anymore, that, that don't need to be shown in, in the record list. And um, it puts them in a separate library called the obsolete documents or obsolete library, whatever you like to call it. And it moves it away into that, that particular library and basically hides them away. They're still accessible if you do need to um, access them later on, but um, it, it gets them out of the way from the general use. Um, as opposed to archiving, which is more of a leftover from when hard drives were quite small and, and quite expensive and, and a lot of people um, used to archive a lot of their big databases and a lot of documents over to a, a separate server. Um, we, we don't really use that much anymore because um, hard drives are so cheap these days and everyone usually stays you know, on, on the same drive all the time. But we do use obsolete and that's what we'll go through now. Once again, we're checking what module are we in? We're on the knowledge module, we're in the document function, and we're in the policies library. And what we want to do is obsolete this POL020. So it's pretty straightforward. We just click on that obsolete library, and change this if it's not to obsolete, and click OK. Now this can take a little bit of time because what it's doing is searching all the fast track, um, checking what topics that it might be under, uh, checking what indexes it might be under and taking it out of all those particular parts of fast track and, and putting it away into the obsolete documents folder. So don't be too concerned if it does take a little bit of time this one. Alright, <laughs> doesn't normally take this much time, there must be guys using our network a bit I'd say. Okay, done. Now to check that has been done, you can go into the obsolete documents and you'll go, okay, where's the obsolete documents? What we have is it's hidden away even in the obsolete documents um, library. And up here there's a little tick box that says current. And that's highlighting all the documents that are current and there's nothing current in the obsolete documents. So we untick that and that shows us all the documents that have been obsoleted in that particular um, in that particular library. And the one we're looking for is PLL020. Creates a color here and it hides it away basically is the way I describe it in, in that particular library. Now if you do need to, if you say, oh I didn't really mean to do that or um, you want to reverse the action, it's pretty straightforward or down the track you think, oh what happened to that document? Oh that's right, I've, I've obsolete it and I want to reuse that again. Pretty straightforward is just clicking on the reinstate. 
and what that does, it reinstates it back into the library that it was in the first place. You can let people know through this who to do if you like or, or make any comments, but it's simply by just clicking on OK and that allows the document to go back into that folder which was 020 and there it is there. Uh, the other uh, aspects on, on this process menu is when you do obsolete a document, if you did want to notify anyone about obsoleting that document, this is where you could do that as well. And that's exactly the same as when you're issuing a document, that it just sends an email out with a link to that particular document and say, okay, this has been obsoleted. If you are looking for it, let us know if you do need to use it again and I can reinstate it, that sort of thing. Uh, document info is exactly the same as the document info on the other process menu and just allows you if you do want to go into document information on a particular record to save you having to go back to another another process menu. There it is. Not great on making any changes at that point, it's just viewing the record regarding that document. Uh, now deleting a document is something that you want to be quite cautious on because as it suggests, it deletes it, you can't retract it, you can't find it, you can't get it from anywhere, it's gone. Mainly used if you, when you're, you, when you're first creating a document and you make a mistake or whatever happens and there's already one there or something like that, you can delete that document. But for document management processes and, and controlling a document, it's best not to delete any particular document at all, it's best to go through the, the obsolete process. And, um, and obsolete it into that particular library. But if you do happen to want to delete a particular document, we just click on the particular record. Now it's worthwhile, I usually highlight to people, is actually open up the document information on that record to make sure, yes, this is the one I want, want to delete. This is the information that, that uh, concurs with, with what I know of that particular document. You could even actually open up the document and check the contents of the document as well, just as a double check. Uh, you know, the old adage of, uh, of check three times and, and action once makes a big difference in when you're deleting documents. So what we do is, once again, we're, we're clicking on the knowledge, the documents, and we, we do have the right record that we're wanting to delete, and we click on the delete record, or delete document, I should say. Now this is just an extra confirmation on, is this the right one that I want to delete? So we type that in, pol.020, and yes, this is the correct one, and off it goes. All right, so that's gone, that was pol020, so all gone. So once again, I do caution you on using that um, uh, at all really, it, it is there, but you know, be very cautious and it, it really is just as easy to obsolete a document rather than delete one. Alright, we're just clicking on the, the back button here and going through the rest of them. The, the other aspects of this, this menu, uh, the importing, uh, is for importing documents into Fast Track. Now I can run a whole separate training session on that, um, there's, a, there's a template that you fill in information about all the documents that you want to import into Fast Track, and um, and then connect with that document through this browse button, and go through that process of importing. Uh, a little bit more involved than that, but um, that's generally what we go through. But there are quite a few steps, and I have documentation on that if anyone's interested in in doing you know, importing of documents into Fast Track. But we won't go into it in too much today. Uh, the unlocking is. Uh, similar to when you, you check a document out and you want to access that document, you can click on unlock and that uh, allows you to be able to access that document in case someone's gone on sick and they've checked it out and you can't access it, that's a way of, of unlocking it. it. It's pretty much exactly the same as the cancel button here. When you check out, you can actually cancel that checkout as well. Same process. Um, as that one. Remove an entry. We will go into that after we go down into the lower process menu, but that's like when you, for example, you're removing a, an attachment or a document on this particular record, you want to remove it. 
uh, it's, it's used a lot more in say the compliance uh, module and um, when you've created checklists within the compliance module and within a checklist there's lots of different questions and you can remove the questions that you don't um, see that you no longer need on a checklist um, but it, it's used for different purposes on, on different modules and different functions but it, it, it can be used quite readily as well is that remove, engine, uh, remove entry. Uh, the do action is more of a more of a fast track. It's just adding code to do certain actions within fast track, and it's it's really just sort of a programming aspect that that um, that fast track use. Setup I will go into a little bit later on, and that's where I'll just show you quickly. This is where the the information about what's happening on the back end of, of fast track. This brings up a window on all about the policies library. That's the actual um, the path to the policies library and, and the different aspects of the policies library. It's who's controlling or what department is controlling that library and uh, who the manager is in charge of that library and who the, the assistant or the coordinator is in charge of that library. Or if we want to know the prefix of that library, we can look at it through this window as well. We will go into a little bit later on on talking about these different aspects of, of the back end of, of Fast Track and um, talking about the analysis code and the SS code, class code and priority code. So we can change those. Um, they're the drop-down menus that, that can be used on the screens and, and we can customise and change those if we, if we so, uh, so desire. Uh, there's a workflow status that we'll look into later as well. Um, and this starts the whole calendar entry for the, um, uh, for the action process on, on what actions are being entered into the calendars. Uh, it then goes into what's called the diary interface and this is about how emails are, um, are controlled within Fast Track and how the escalation process works. So we will go into that later on. That's a fair lot of information to take in but uh, if we're going okay with time we should be able to get through that as well. But for now I wanted to go down into the lower process menu. So to go down into the lower process menu I always go back to the, the original, I suppose, of where we start with the, the, the normal process menu. Click on the record and once again we're in knowledge, we're in documents, we're in the policy library and we're clicked on the record beside uh, the record that we want to open or the record that we want to view this information about. And down the bottom is what I call the viewing process menu or the lower process menu it's also called. Now this one um, is used quite readily, used quite a lot. Um, don't use a record much, uh, that, that just allows you to print out anything regarding this record or emailing regarding this record. I don't find um, too many businesses use that too much but it is there uh, for your use. The main thing that, that I find is, is used in the update menu here other than uh, you know within different modules is this add note. I find this quite handy um, on just any aspects that are relevant to this document that you want to take note of um, and it keeps track of uh, you know a history of any notes for this particular document or remembering this applies to any module um, to any record in Fast Track. There's always a fairly similar process menu down below and you can add notes to any aspect of that along the way. Um, and I suppose something to clarify a lot of people ask why is there notes and why is there comments? Something that we use as a guideline is within the notes box are the actual facts. What is it that I'm, I'm wanting to get across here? And then the comments box is really supporting those facts. It may be a bit more of a description on those facts and that's the main reason we use the two boxes. Obviously if you don't, don't need to, you don't need to put any information in there at all. Um, and the involved one is Hey, who do I want to notify? Is there anyone I not want to notify about this particular note? Always thinking through, do I want to use any of these boxes? No, not really, that's fine. But at least you've thought through, do I need to access this information later on? Do I need to put some, some more information in there? The changes in distribution is, is not really used at all. They're from, um, they're from different modules altogether. The history one certainly is. Um, 
this gives us a bit of an idea on what's been happening on this particular record. So it goes through on, it's been versioned, it's checked out, it's checked in, um, it, it's been approved, there's been an attachment to this particular record. So you can, you can go back and, and um, if you want to view what's been happening, who's done what, it gives you a, a full rundown on who's done what and what date has been happening to that record. So it's a great audit trail, the history. I find that's quite, uh, you, you know, used quite, quite a lot. Uh, um, Peter, may I make a Yes. It's Lorraine here. Hi, Lorraine, yep. I found, I found that in, in ours, it doesn't seem to go in, in actual um, chronological order. Each day seems to um, go in chronological order, and then the next day, it works its way down in chronological order as well. Okay. If, if somebody, if an action is taken, say, at 3 p.m. on that document, yes. and then the next action at 3.15, like the times don't show, but it looks as though the second action will come in underneath the first one. Oh, okay, so it's out of, out of sync. Mm, it can be very confusing. Okay, that might be worth... Um you know, jotting an email um, to one of our techies and get them to have a look at that and, and stipulate which is it your preference. I know they can change. Yeah. It's, it's not Peter like something. Yep. Uh, we had the same issue, but that wasn't known. Okay. And and was it addressed, so, Evan? Yeah, well, I believe it was addressed. I haven't had a look at it since. Okay. But that was an issue that came up on our screen, and it was fixed up in the issues register, so it should be in our record somewhere. Okay, and um, do you find it's only in the history one? I know there's a lot in uh, yeah. related as well. Yep. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, as, as uh, the lady said, it seems to have sorted on on date, but it doesn't seem to take always the the time into account. Okay, all right. Let me check up on that. I I must admit I I've only looked at it from a day perspective rather than a time. Is, is a time an inter, an important one for you, Lorraine? I suppose if if you're trying to trying to work out well, it is. Yeah, what's happened what's over the... Going on. Okay, yes. all right. Time frame, all right. I'm just writing that down, guys, on, uh, on the history. All right. I'm always learning about this, um, this software myself. So um, I'll clarify that and, and just pop it on an email to everyone if, if that's fine. On just how that uh, how the time frame works. I know it uh, works in obviously calendar process, but um, how the time frame works. So obviously the the most latest you want on the top, and then it then it's um, going down from there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. always the latest should be on top. Okay, latest on top. I know um, it's not happening till mid next year, but I, I know we will have control with our next update. Um, we'll have control over a lot more of the functions on this bottom process menu, because it, uh, as you know, on on the um, on the records, you can actually click and and, and sort it and, and filter it in ascending or descending order, and that's what we want to be able to go to in the um, in the lower process menu as well. Is um, is exactly the same process. So once we can do that, then you can sort it in in whatever order. But I will check up on that on, on what's the default on that um, on that sorting of that history. Is there any way to view times when an action has been taken? Not that I know of. No, no. It, okay. Um, it might be something they're bringing out in, in the next um, next update. But um, as you can see on these, it's just this has all happened obviously in, in that particular day. Uh, so that's what it comes up with. Um, I, I don't think. I suppose it depends on 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 how many, um, how much action is happening on one record, um, on, on how much detail you need. Um, you know, if you do need it in, in times, and and then how often. You know, is it every minute or is it every thirty minutes, that sort of thing. Let me check up on it and, and see what we can do on that. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Where were we? Okay. Uh, the history menu, yep. And the other one that, that's used reasonably regularly is the attachment uh, menu. 
and um, the, the, the main thing I wanted to point out is the difference, I suppose, between the attach menu and the document menu. The attach menu is, is more for attaching scans or um, JPEGs or images, that sort of thing, maybe things to support, like in, in, in training, in the training module you might want to attach different certificates that people might have done that are scanned in. Um, you can attach a document to there as well, uh, but the main thing with, with the attachment is if that original document is changed, it's not updated. So it won't update this particular document. It's just sitting there, external to Fast Track. Um, the the original document is. So it's as simple as just clicking on the add, and then going to the browse button and finding where that particular document that you want to attach is sitting. And I might attach this one. And then we do click on attach, and that confirms that this has been uploaded and then we close that window and then we OK that window to confirm that that is attaching that particular document to that particular record. Okay, So that's the attachment process as opposed to the document process is linking a particular document to that record and to that document as well. So this is where we look up what library is that document sitting in and so we're in the policies library so that will bring up all the documents sitting in that particular policies library. We click on any one of those and we can add that to that particular record. Now if this original document that I've just added, um, if it's changed, if the original document has changed, that will automatically update that link. So that means that document will always be updated and in the end be the most current. I'll just click on OK there. So that's the, the main difference between documents and uh, attachments, is the attachments aren't updated, they're just sitting there as, as a, a foreign document I suppose, but still attached to, to Fast Track, whereas under documents it's an actual link. And um, if the original document is updated, it then um, updates that link as well. Now we talked about um, removing of, of an item on the process menu before as well, this remove entry. That's what we'll do now is remove this actual attachment that I just put on. The main thing we want to look for before we do remove an attachment is we want to note down this trans ID number. We will need that, so it's 17026, 17026, so it's as easy as remove, and what is it? It's an attachment, there's only a few that we've got uh, to choose from, attachment, history or schedule, and the trans ID is 17026, and we click OK and we can look back down on the lower process menu again and we're clicking on attachment and we did have two attachments and now we've got one left. So that's a way of just removing stuff that, that aren't really needed any, any further and that can be applied to a history. I, I don't know why you'd ever want to remove a history, I mean it's there for a certain pur pur purpose I should say, um, but you can remove a history item. Um, or an attachment, uh, or anything related as well. Um, and the related is really, as it's suggested, anything that's happening within this record, within this document, is highlighted down there. Any changes, any in, if you're adding it to a particular index, if you're adding it to a particular topic, um, if there are any changes, it's all about um, in that related. Now you can relate certain aspects to this um, this particular um, uh, document as well, uh, and that could be through any aspect of Fast Track that you want to relate a particular item to this particular record. Um, also, you can you can link, and that's very similar to linking a document is relinking anything that's related to this particular record as well. Pretty similar process as we went through before. 
Um, the actions is more meant for other modules. Uh, for example, it's used quite uh, quite often within a compliant the compliance module. And for example, if you were, were within audits and an audit was was carried out, um, and after the audit was finished, you realise that you need to generate some corrective actions. Well, that would then go into action and then add an action and then it brings up the choices that you want to add so you want to add a, a car and what that does it it brings up the car screen straight away so you can fill that out immediately to create that corrective action which is related directly to this particular audit um, the action is not used as much in documents as I say more for module other modules but um, if that's something you you know you want to you want to generate something to add uh, an action to that particular document, well, uh, that's where you can do it. Um, all right, back to the lower process menu. And the last one along here is uh, the schedules. And, and really, this is um, for if you um, if you want this document reviewed in six months or twelve months or two years or whatever, you then put a schedule on that, and it will remind you that this document is coming up for review in set set amount of time. In, uh, as I say, in in, um, in three years' time, it'll remind you 30 days beforehand. Okay, this is up for review. So that's quite a handy one if you're you're doing that sort of processing on on each document, say for standard operating procedures, SOPs, and things like that. Hey, Peter, it's Justine here. Hey, Justine. Hi. Um, just with the scheduling. Yep. You sent me an email through about it, but can you can we set up in the system that? Every document has the same schedule, so three years from when it was created. You can, you yes. Yep, that, that was in that email that I sent you, Justine. Did you get that one on? Okay. on and that, I, did, I just didn't quite understand if you could do it as a system thing or you had to do it each document that you put in. Okay, well, that, that brings up an important point, and I'll go into that now. It's not really system-wide. It's more, let me bring that up. I'm going into the admin and the setup menu. This is what we looked at before. And I'm going then into what's called issue profile. Now, issue profile is, is like a template um, that we use in Fast Track. And it, it's a template on all the drop down menus, different instructions, special instructions. On that particular issue profile is what we want to happen whenever we use that issue profile. And this one is. is quite relevant to, well it is relevant to documents and in particular internal documents. And what you can do and, and what we'd, we'd, we did with Justine's case is we put special instructions down below here to say every document that's created using this issue profile will have a schedule that's created in three years time and that happens on every document created within that issue profile. And all the internal documents use that issue profile all the way through. So that means every internal document will always be have a, a three-year schedule uh, that is depending on the setup. And that's will, will we go into that now? We're running out of time. But um, for example, the, the standard setup is it notifies you within 30 days before that that review is is um, is due to occur. Now you can apply that to each library, but that's a different process all over again. This is applying it to this particular issue profile. Did that help, Justine? Yeah, thanks. Yep. It, yeah, it, it, it takes a bit of just continuous exposure to these processes, I suppose, that we use within Fast Track. But that's a big one, is the issue profile is really the templates. How the screen, how that screen interacts with itself, really. And we have all these different features within this issue profile, within this template, um, that you can change. Say the administrator can change. And this is a certain drop-down menu that you can then change the description or you can add or, or take things out of here. Um, there's also class codes and you can change these around as well. And I'll show you where this appears when we bring up the document or the record information 
this is controlling these particular drop down menus. Now I went into this question mark before and I'd already changed it and up here we talked about changing the particular records per screen but also we can change the particular modes that Fast Track's in. The standard mode that Fast Track is in is the run mode. What we do is we change that to the AUD mode and I'll show you what brings up on the screen when you change the to AUD mode. We'll just refresh the screen going back in the doc info. It brings up all this information which is quite relevant to us if, if we're wanting to know particular information but the more information that, that you want to know about is if you highlight your mouse over the particular words it tells you what's happening in the background. A lot of times these are customized. They're, these words are particular. This is a description of the field that you can stipulate. I want it used, I want it called this or I want it called that. And you don't know what the actual field underneath is called. So this one is pretty straightforward. This is called the class code because it, it hasn't been changed. And what you can do is you can change any of these drop down menus within that class code. And that's what we do through the admin and the setup and we go into this class code here and if we wanted to change any of these descriptions we click on open and this is where we can change commercial and confidence to well, let's call it just dash 8 for whatever reason there might be certain coding on there you want to put in so this is set up um, customized to your needs initially but they do change and this is the sort of thing that you can you can change on an ongoing basis if it's so required. So I click out of that and then we want to refresh that screen and back into doc info and this is a class code we, we changed and there it is commercial in conference dash 8 and that can be applied to the the uh, the assess drop down menu as well um, and also priority which doesn't occur on that particular that screen but it, if, if you're wondering what those fields are and it's not quite obvious you just put your mouse over there and it will tell you what the name of the field is behind the scenes and you can change that accordingly. Now we don't have a real lot of time to get into it in too much depth and um, but I will just go over it just very quickly on how we manage the emails in the background, how we manage the calendar entries as well. We talked about last week on the workflow and I see this as an absolute crucial aspect of getting everyone in the habit of, especially within documents or any part of the, any other module, is what is the workflow that we're following through, what is the process. And whenever we're changing a workflow status or workflow step, it's governed by this particular next date. This is the most crucial part of, of this screen is this next date. And what this is saying is I want this particular action finished by that particular date. If I click on it I can always change it. See, I, I might think oh now I'll give this person a little bit more time to finish that particular uh, action and that's fine. You can change that. Instead of having it seven days we've now um, we've now added quite a few more days to it. We're giving them say 11 days to finish it. So we okay that. Oh something I did forget to mention at that point as well, let me bring that back up again, is this is also a crucial thing to update on who do I want to notify about this. Obviously the person that you're referring this document on you want to put that person in but do I want to, re do I want to notify anyone else? That's where you put in the who to do. Now we go back into admin and then setup. This is back into this window again. And just a quick introduction is how those those dates are generated. That next date on that window was generated to be the 27th. So that was step number three, the refer step. And here we only use ever use these major days. And this is what we put out on as purely guidelines really. And we've got seven days we're allowing for that step. 
and that will generate that 27th. But I changed it to the 31st. You can change it to whatever. It's just a guideline. But that's where it picks up the numbers to generate that next step. And that's the first step that adds it to a calendar to say, okay, this is due at this particular time, this on this particular date. Um, we also check to see if there's a yes or a no in this particular window. What that's saying is, yes, I do want a calendar entry made at this particular point. At these points, the check out, check in, no calendar entries are being made. So therefore, the next step is therefore no emails are going to be sent out that step. So it's starting the step. It's, it's not completing the step. It's starting the step to say it's entering a calendar entry. The next step, what we look for, is the diary interface. So this diary interface looks at the calendar and say, has there been an entry made in the calendar? Yes. All right, I'll then start the next the, the process on sending, generating an email about that particular step. And we were looking at step three here. And what it's saying is, the notify days, it's zero. It's saying, I want to send out an email as soon as that's created. I'm saying it's immediate. The reminder days is it's saying send out a reminder one day before that next date. So that next date was on the 31st. So a reminder email will go out on the 30th to say, okay, this is due tomorrow. You better get on to it. There's also a due, uh, an email sent out on the actual due date. So on the 31st, an email goes out to say, OK, this action is due today. And then it goes on to the escalation process. Stipulated here is seven days overdue. And what that means is seven days after that due date, and this is why this due date becomes so crucial, everything centers around that due date. Seven days, so on the 7th of January, the due date was the 31st. On the 7th of January, an email will go out to the person to say, uh, this is now outstanding, and it will also go out to that person's boss to say, this action has been seven days outstanding, something needs to be done. It then goes to another seven day cycle, so that's 14 days after the due date, so therefore say on the 14th of January, it goes out to the person to say, this is now 14 days overdue, and it goes out to the person's boss to say it's still for, it's it's now 14 days outstanding or I should say sorry 14 days overdue and it goes out to the person's boss's boss to say it's now 14 days overdue so that's that escalation process you also need to to note there needs to be the name of a message the email message in here uh, there's no email message in there, so even if you did want that to go out, that will not go out at that point. And this number five just just notifies or, or just highlights how many steps there are in the whole um, email process. So there's one, number one is the notify days. So that's where we notified the person straight away that this is due in 10 days, 11 days, whatever it was. Then we remind the person, that's step two. Then there's a due on the on the due date, that's step three. Then seven days after the due date is step four. And then another seven days after that again, or 14 days after the due date, that's step five. And you can change that. That can go to nine, if so desired. If you've got a very deep organizational, um, uh, organizational chart. Um, but uh, you know we don't want to inundate people with emails as well because we're all inundated all the time anyhow. So that's a little bit of an overview. There's a fair lot to take in very quickly, and that's something that I can um, I can go into a lot more depth in a different training session altogether just on that. And even after seeing it, you know, once or twice, it, it, it does take a bit to sink in. But the, the main emphasis is, and let me close that screen, and I'll just bring up this window again. The main emphasis is everything centers around this next date. So the first step uh, populates that date, but after saying that, you can change that, but then all the notify and remind and due dates is all around that particular date. And the person that you put in or people that you put into that who to do 
they're the people that are going to be notified and their bosses are also going to be notified and their boss's boss are also notified. So those two fields are, are very particular, very important in this particular window because it starts, it starts everything going. All right. I know that was a fair lot to take in, a uh, fair lot of talking from my perspective. I'll just open it to any questions, uh, if that might help, uh, just to finish it off now, if you like. Any particular questions anyone would like to ask? Um, two people spoke at the same time. Hello? Yeah, yeah, Sally. Yes, hello, I'm here. Yep. Is that okay, you, Mary? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm um, unmuted now, thank you. Oh, great, okay. Now, someone was asking a question there, sorry I, I overtalked you. Yeah, no, sorry, this is Salma from Adelaide, how are you? Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> That's good. Um, I started a bit late because we had a problem with the system. Okay. Um, all the details will be in after Christmas if I need to go back and... Yes. Yes, I'll, okay. I'll notify everyone that, that we have posted it and they are available. Um, yes. I don't have a particular date because everyone's, okay. everyone's getting this sort of Christmas mode now so no one wants to make any commitments. <laughs> sure. But yes. yeah, they, they will be posted after Christmas. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good, thank you. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I was a bit lost at the beginning and until I got it back, so, okay. yeah, so I need it from the beginning. And, and that's the beauty of that flexibility. I, I find it fantastic. Yeah. You can just play five minutes at a time and just you know fast forward and go to a particular area and, and just look at that yeah. particular area. It, it really is quite powerful. No, it's, it's, it's really good fun. It's really good fun to learn and experience that. But, you know, like you need it, um, I need it more um, to see the session from the beginning. And okay. What you, what you did in the first 10, 10 minutes. Uh, and this... Of, uh, I'm not too sure you were here on the on the first session, were you? But it, this is a yes, fun. I was. Oh, you were. Okay, great. Yeah, no, I was. I was okay. on the first one, and, and this is, and I'm going to be on everyone. But we've been having problems um, signing into the meeting, so that's why um, today it took a bit longer. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> we work, but we work it out at the end. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes okay. different firewalls get in the way. Different security settings get in the way of, of yeah, allowing this. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. But now you got yeah, it sorted. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes Thanks. Thank you very much. No worries. Peter, with the scheduling, if we set up where you set an issue profile to have um, three years and then we import all our documents, will that take the three years or we have to do each document separately? Because in your email it said only for new documents. Yes. It's only for documents going from this step on. It's not for existing documents. It doesn't then go and add a schedule to all the different existing documents. What it does is when you've created it, it goes and searches, okay, are there any special instructions about this record or about this particular document? And then it, and it looks for it and it says, oh, yep, there's a particular schedule. I, I want to make sure I generate an auto schedule on that, yes. So will it take, if we import all our documents, will it take the auto schedule? Or oh, when you import all your documents? That's a good question, Justine. I don't think so. Let me check up on that. You ask the, the best questions, Justine. Catching me out all the time. Um, importing documents. All right. Let me qualify that, Justine, and I will get back to you on that one. All right. If there's no more questions, well, uh, Peter, just one from me. Oh Lane. yes. Yep. Um, is this part of a series of training sessions? This is the first time I've um, joined in. Okay. Are you doing more? We are, yes. Yeah, this will this will continue in the new year. Greg's plan was to to have the, the free process up until the end of January. And then what we're getting is a lot of feedback on, on very customized processes. So the, the screen that you're seeing is not obviously exactly the same as your screen. A lot of people... Um, are finding that they want to see their screen and talk about their particular instances. Um, so that, that's the feedback um, we're getting is, you know, particular customised sessions and, and that's when we'll, that, that's something to talk to Greg about on organising that. But there will be these continuing to, for all of January and they will be recorded and, and freely accessible. Uh, but after the end of January, then it's still 
it's still going to be decided on what happens from then. So when will the next one be? Will I be notified? You certainly will be, Lorraine. Okay. Um, we're back on the 10th of January, which is the Monday. So I'd suggest it be the 17th will be the, the first one um, in January, 17th of January. Okay, the only thing I need to check out from today really is um, this lib folder of yours. I yes. don't, I'm not aware that I've got a folder like this. Okay. I thought that you lost all previous versions because I've never been able to find any. Okay, it should Sorry. be... Yeah, it, it should be in the um, the lib folder. There, there's certainly a lib folder that's in the background if you go into your okay. your Windows directly uh, directory. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure exactly. I'll, I'll go and search for that. I, yeah. I wasn't aware you had one. It, it's sitting in with the import folder and the meth folder, mm -hmm. um, yep. the template folder. They're all a combination of folders all in the background there. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Well, Thank I hope everyone. Thanks, Lorraine. I, I'd just like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and uh, have a fun and safe one to everyone. Thanks, Thank Philip. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank and you very much. We'll see you in Bye. your new year. Bye. 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 Bye.